Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff Mixing Course. This course is 15 lessons long, and in these 15 lessons, you will learn to mix a whole track from start to end using only Ableton Live's own stock devices. What you will learn is a mixing workflow that works for any type of genre and any type of song, the key concepts of mixing, awesome techniques, and ways to apply the Ableton Live stock devices into your mix, as well as some fun tips and tricks. While watching this course, you can actually practice and do exactly what I'm doing in the videos using a song that I have created just for this course. You can download the stems and Ableton Live practice session from the link down below. No previous mixing experience needed. I will explain everything to you and you can get started with your mixing. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified every single time I post a new video for this course. Let's get started with mixing. So this episode is about... What is it about? Stereo Spectrum, one of my favorite things in the world. I just love Stereo Spectrum. Honestly, understanding this concept will like help you so much in your mixing. I promise you. Also, I'm so happy to say that this mixing course is sponsored by DistroKit, the amazing distribution company that has helped me personally so much as an independent artist because they have so many cool features that help you to promote it, but also to, to put your song out there to people. And one of these things is called Hyperfollow. And it's this one link that really helps you to spread the love of your release. In the end of this video, I tell you a little bit about Hyperfollow, so check that out because honestly, it's so great. But now let's get into this tutorial. Yes, we do. <laughs> So in the beginning, we talked a lot about space. We talked about uh, depth, height, and also width. So now we're gonna be talking about stereo spectrum, which is the width that can be achieved in a stereo signal. But before we go to that, you need to understand what is stereo and what is mono. With stereo, uh, stereo signal, we can see, we can see, so we can hear 180 degrees in front of us. So example, mono is 12 o'clock and then right, exact right is three o'clock and then exact left is nine o'clock. So everything on our song should be between the nine and three o'clock. Usually because the way that we listen music nowadays, which is in a really shitty uh, speakers, we need to start also mixing our songs that way. And what that means is that usually, that means that uh, kick, bass and lead vocal, if you keep them in the middle, you can't really go wrong in any type of mixing nowadays. So all these signals that you can see here, are stereo tracks. So you can see there's two tracks together like this. So what happens is that we can actually control the left channel and the right channel separately. So we can have something else happening in the left channel than the right channel. So example, we can have a look at this pat track here, which is a sample from Splice. So what's happening is there's a slight movement between left and right. So you can see that the signal is not exactly the same. The, the way that example, these signals are here, pretty much the same. Then we can have also mono signal, which can be example here. And I record something. <laughs> oh, it recorded with everything else. But you can see there's only one track here. So that is a mono signal. And that is because this microphone, so there's only one input and output. So that means that the signal is exactly in the middle. All these vocals that I have recorded for this session are originally mono, but because when I exported it, they look now in stereo. Because it's left and right, it gives us a lot of different type of tools to work on the mix. So right now, the mix doesn't sound that great because everything is in the middle. So, you know, like in the first video, we talked about the room in front of us. Well, right now, all the players are in the middle of the floor as a one big pile. 
So they are all playing on the top of each other, like in a one place. If we picture the room in front of us, we close our eyes, we can hear that everything is kind of in the middle. So none of the players are on the left, none of the players are on the right. As much as we can separate the frequencies, uh, with EQ, we can bring things closer and backwards with a compressor. We need to also start thinking about width. So what's on the left, what's in the right. So there's so many different tools in Ableton Live that we can do this with. Even that sample is very mono. And what that means is that we cannot have the sound around us it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like there's something left and there's something right so we can have actually a tool called utility here and we can put it on the track and there is a control with there's under there's also mono so if i now go here to this track and press mono we can hear the track in exact mono everything happens in an exact middle close your eyes and think about it Okay, and now if I take the mono off, we are hearing now stereo. There's definitely something happening a bit more wider, but it's still pretty much in the middle. So what if we use this width control and go to 400%? So this width control goes from zero, which is mono, to middle, which is stereo, basic stereo, and then we have extra width, which is we're separating these two completely to the left and right. So we have almost like an independent left and independent right. But listen what happens when I, I spread this stereo channel from 100 to 400. Listen to that. So now, let's listen to this comparing to mono. So 400. And mono. Okay, so you could hear a massive difference. And how else we can put things left and right are with the pan controls on our mixing session. So every single channel has a pan control. So example on vocals, what we could do, which I usually like doing, is that we could example, we have three different type of vocals. So vocal one, vocal two, vocal three. So the main one I keep on the middle and then the vocal two, I could put example uh, 11 o'clock and vocal three, I could put one o'clock. So now when we are listening, way you love me tonight. it spreads the vocals left and right, which makes already separation. Remember the point of mixing is we're separating things. So we can actually have uh, that almost this kind of illusion that the vocal, main vocalist is standing in the middle of the stage. And when we, when we control uh, the volume, compressor, everything else, we can get the illusion that the backing singers are left and right behind of the lead vocal. Example, that's a one way of doing it. I'm gonna go and put the vocal to end also to uh, 11 o'clock. It also gives an illusion of a bigger room, bigger space, and also bigger vocal. Uh, audio FX, and from here, we're gonna go and add pitch and modulation, and we're gonna add auto pan, okay? And auto pan is amazing. So it basically does the panning, as in here, but automatically, so we can get movement into something. So we add a little bit amount, and then this is the rate on how fast do we want to go left and right. Face is in the alignments of left and right. So now there's a little bit of movement between those two. 
And now, basically, we can do the same. So we can use either the pen control or we can use the utility control to spread things around and put everything on left and right. So what we could do is now go to the drums and we're going to put kick, of course, in the middle. And then we have hi-hat and snare. If you look at the drum kit on a stage, where is hi-hat and snare are on the right side, isn't it? So on the left side of the player, but of the right side of the, uh, the audience. So you can choose to, of course, put example snare slightly to the right and then hi-hat a lot more right if you want. You can do that or you can be a bit more creative because it's electronic music. It doesn't necessarily need to be super realistic. We can go and put utility here on the hi-hat and we can spread it a little bit so that it feels a bit like all over the place. Like it's, it's wider, it's bigger in the room. Or we can just have it example on the left side. So it's almost like someone is standing and just playing that on the left side of the drummer. So if we go to the group channel of the mids example, and mids are really tricky because there's a lot of, can be a lot of muddiness in the mid area. So if we add an EQ to the mid group, EQ8, there we go. There's actually a mode that says left, right, or MS. And if we add it, especially to the group track, we can do a lot of EQing just on the left channel or just on the right channel, also that we separate the middle part and the stereo part. So as you know, on these tracks, there's mostly left and right, we spread everything around, where on the uh, low end group, there's a lot of happening in the middle, so kick and bass, and then stuff happening in the right. So example, mid side mode would be good for the drums, where for the uh, mid sections, so all the synths and strings and stuff, the left, right would be good. I'm on now on left side, so I can just EQ the left side by itself. <laughs> happening there a lot of uh, muddiness as well so what I could just do now is make sure that that's not happening so I could just take a, le a little bit away from around 390 and then go to the right side and do the same thing I can solo what's happening on the left or right using the headphones that sounds really nice around the 1.3 little gentle in there. That even more separates the stereo signal and as well as helps us separating every single element on our uh, mix. But same thing we can do here now on the low end part. So this is now in the mid. So this is just bass and kick. So you can hear, you can't really hear this snare or hi-hat here. So we can highlight a little bit really wide cue there on the mid to highlight those. And then we can go oh, here onto the sides. And we can hear just the, we can maybe take away a little bit from the sides. We can take away the low end. Yay! There's other ways also to exaggerate and deepen the stereo spectrum. Uh, those are different effects like reverb, delays, as well as chorus and flanger. So we are spreading to the stereo field and we're adding to separation, which is the whole point of mixing. Separation, separation, separation. So we can do a clean mix. Okay, next episode is reverb. So you definitely want to be there. <laughs> hey, I just want to talk to you a little bit about DistroKit Hyper Follow. So this is actually a feature on DistroKit that I have personally used so much. Just a couple uh, weeks ago, I published my single, No, I'll Do It.
oh no i'll do it and uh what you can do is that in here in the settings find hyper follow and i can see this even before anything has been published so when i click this i get this page that is fully customizable so i can go here on the right and this edit this page and i can add the artist song title cover work my youtube channel a uh, music video which i put song release days uh, spotify pre-saved also music links so i can add all of the ones that the music is published in also my social media links so in the end how it looks like is this so you can also preview the track from here it's it's basically the one stop shop for everything every single link to do with your release so it will have all the uh, shops all the music videos or any kind of merch you want to put it's one link with everything and it's free from DistroKid. So when I started advertising for my uh, my single coming up, so you can see here on my Instagram, I started to post about my music video and all that. I was asking people to pre-save my, my track. And this was the link I wanted them to get to because they I wanted them to press this button and also see that there's a music video coming and all that. So what I did is that here in Linktree, no, I'll do it. Listen here. So what it does, it takes it to this website because some people are not in Spotify. Some people are not in iTunes. It will take you to this website that then takes them to wherever they want to. Link to DistroKid where you can sign up, where you can release your music and where you can then use this hyperlink all down below in a link. So go there and have a look. I basically publish all my music through DistroKid. So I definitely recommending it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, please hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post. Usually I always post all my Patreon followers here, but in this mixing course, I am now thanking all my Patreons in the info box down below. If you want to be part of that family, where I do weekly live stream Q and A's. I give feedback, I give free stuff, presets and templates. If you want to be part of that all and amazing community, then please check out the link also down below. Also remember I have merch, so check that out as well down below. Have a very lovely day and I'll see you next Sunday because I post every single Sunday.